We're going to talk about rifle barrels, specifically the rifling forms, the numbers of the lands and the grooves of the barrel, twist rates, and dimensional aspects of rifle barrels. In my experience over a lifetime, every time that we change one of these one of these aspects, we change somewhat depending on many circumstances, perhaps accuracy, perhaps perhaps velocities, and other factors such as pressure curves and one thing or another with our loads, our hand loads. Now we've got rifle barrels in this day and age that are made with three lands and grooves, four lands and grooves, five lands and grooves, and the five is basically referred to as the 5R. The R stands for the junction of the land and the groove. There's a either an angle or a slight radius there. This this was basically, you know, designed and thought up by a barrel maker by the name of Boots Obermeyer, who has considerable experience and is fairly up in years. But anyway, we've got barrels with six lands and grooves, eight lands and grooves, and one thing another. Provided that the barrel is made correctly. Every aspect of the manufacturer is attended to correctly. There really is not much difference, much difference in the accuracy level of any of these situations to do with land, numbers of lands and grooves. Most of the barrels that I use happen to be six land and groove barrels. I occasionally use four land and groove barrel. I occasionally use a 5R barrel. And I have picked certain calibers over time, perhaps 30 caliber because it's so popular. And I've tested these various different lands and groove situations. Whether it's a three land barrel or a four land barrel or a five or a six to see what the advantages are, and I honestly can't see much of any advantage, provided that the barrel is on size and uniform. And I'm talking about a 30 caliber barrel being 308, not, three, not 310, not 39, but 308 in the groove diameter with a 300 bore. And along with these various situations depending on who's making the barrel because not everybody makes a three land, a four land, a five land, or a six land barrel. Some people make six land barrels and perhaps five, five land barrels. Some people make three land barrels and six land barrels. But I'm not familiar with anybody that's making a three land, a four land, a five land, and a six land barrel. It might be happening in one or two specific calibers, but perhaps no more. And along with this aspect, when we start going to different rifling forms and one thing or another, made by different manufacturers, we're obviously going to have different finishes in barrels. This brings up a whole nother aspect to do with rifle barrels. The finish in the barrel. We've got a misconception that because it's a match quality barrel that it's not going to copper foul. Well, <laughs> oh really? You know, every barrel that's made copper fouls to one extent or another. Whether it's a small amount of copper fouling or full copper fouling or whatever. And 
you've got to understand when we're forcing we're forcing a solid copper or a gilding metal solid type of a bullet or even a two-part bullet that's got a copper jacket or a gilding metal jacket with a lead core you force something down that small hole whatever that diameter is whether it's 30 caliber or 264 whatever it is there's a lot of things happening folks and you know i i see people that think that they ought to have have another barrel because it takes a, takes them a little bit to get some copper out of their barrel you need to get a hold of some reality there's no way that anybody can control it. The barrel maker can't travel with that bullet down the barrel and, and control what's happening to that bullet. You see? The other aspect is there's never been a point in time when we have more selection. You got a lot of barrel makers, and most barrel makers are making a tremendously good barrel. There's only one barrel maker that I'm familiar with that I've been using their barrels, you know, for about 30, 38 years, and that's Hart. Every barrel that comes from Hart, it's marked right on the barrel, the groove diameter of the barrel. Every single barrel is marked the groove diameter. I guess nobody else is proud enough of their barrel to mark the groove diameter of their barrel. And the barrels never vary more than one or two ten thousandths of an inch. The 308 barrel, it's 308, 3081, 3082. I've never had ever, ever, ever a barrel from these wonderful folks that's not on size. And they all shoot extremely well in my hands with my ability to work up loads. And they don't copper foul very doggone much. Very little is left to cleaning. And you might have a barrel that comes from somebody. You might have a barrel that comes from Krieger. And I don't care what it is, it's going to be Mark 300 bore 308 groove. Well, I've got bore gauges. I check the groove down with these barrels. And to be real honest with you, a great share of the barrels actually measure 309. But they stamp at 308. Don't deceive the public. Put the size on the damn barrel. And there's other people doing the same thing. You see, there's no reason for any barrel maker to be making a barrel that varies more than a couple of tenths, one way or the other, of the normal, nominal size. 308, 284, 264, whatever it might happen to be. There's no reason for any damn difference. We've got a greater selection of twist rates now from a, a lot of the manufacturers because of these real long, streamlined, high ballistic coefficient type bullets. And one of the things that you need to pay attention to, let's, let's just pick seven millimeter for instance. When you start tightening up the twist tighter than a nine inch twist, if, if you go from a 9 inch twist to an 8 inch twist or a 7 and a half inch twist or something like this, that's a considerable change. Going from an 8 inch twist, from a 9 inch twist to an 8 inch twist, percentage wise, that's a considerable change. You can expect your pressure to rise by about that same percentage that much quicker. You can expect the velocity to be less with that bullet. In that tighter twist. The tighter the, the tighter, the slower the twist, you see, the the tighter the twist, the quicker the twist, the sooner that it builds pressure. Take an eight inch twist seven millimeter compared to a nine inch twist seven millimeter. Let's go the other way, let's go eleven or twelve twist. You can get considerable velocity 
all these things are changing. Your pressure cur curve is changing considerably between an adius twist and say a tenuous twist barrel because of the percentage of the change. So you need to pay attention to what's going on here. And somebody is just dead set on the idea that they've got to have this or they've got to have that. When they're actually wrong, they're picking a twist that's probably at least an inch too, too quick, ideally, for the bolts that they're going to use. And these are inexperienced people that correspond with me and tell me, well, they want this barrel or they want that barrel. They need to tell me what their bullet that they're going to shoot or the bullets that they're going to intend to shoot. And I'll pick the twist because I know a little bit more about the twist aspect of it and the velocity factors and the pressure factors and everything else involved than they do. So this is an aspect you need to leave it up to somebody who this is their profession. And I correspond with, with, with barrel makers and one thing or another. And if I'm uncertain about something, I ask. And almost always when I ask, it's just exactly what I thought based on their experience. And they're going to only give you information based on their experience, not on hearsay, you know, because these people, that that's, that's their life, that's their likelihood, like the wonderful folks at Heart Rifle Barrels, because I don't think anybody makes a better rifle barrel than, than Hart, based on my experience and the accuracy. You know, I, I just got correspondence here from a man that I built a six millimeter BR for here, you know, early early in the year. And he sent me a, a, a photograph of a 15 shot group that he shot with that rifle, measures 0 0.307. I shot a group that, that size within a few thousands of that size for 10 shots when I sent the rifle out of here. That's a heart barrel. Now, I have situations, that's a bench rest rifle, mind you. I have situations where I've built rifles, barrels from heart, that I've got barrels that are shooting a 16th inch group, a 32nd of an inch group for five shots, you know, I don't think that you're going to better some of this, but this is under, you know, in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing and knows how to shoot, knows how to bench rest their rifle, knows how to work up precision hand loads and one thing or another. And this is a great, much, much greater aspect, you know, that people might happen to think this working up loads. And this is where we've got kind of the misconception that because the barrel is a is a match quality barrel, that it's just automatically gonna shoot. Just because you weighed your powder charge and you put a match primer in and you you put a match bullet in and you maybe even had what's described as match cases. Well, you still gotta have a match load. You can pick all these match situations that you want but you've got to have the ballistics balance in the cartridge. All the components, you know, that make up that cartridge to give you the performance, the repeated performance for accuracy. So this is what I see to do with rifle barrels. And I don't, I don't base this on one or two situations. This is over a lot of trial and error, a lot of shooting and a lot of experimenting and one thing another because working up loads for many individuals for rifles that I that I build build folks build for folks I encounter many situations I encounter situations where there are rifle bullets that are simply more accurate than another bullet or another bullet or another bullet but this is another aspect. You might have your heart dead set on shooting such and such bullet in whatever cartridge. 
But maybe that particular barrel won't like that bullet. Maybe it's going to shoot something else. That's not a fault of the rifle. That's not a fault of anything. It's just where the ballistics shake out. But that particular rifle, the entire makeup of that loaded round, those cartridges in that rifle barrel on the particular day with that rifle build, what really performs. So don't be misled just because you haven't hit on that particular load. And I don't have, I don't have hardly anything that you would describe as my favorite pet load because every barrel reacts somewhat different to different bullets and one thing or another and from manufacturer to manufacturer and from shooter to shooter. So this is what we've got here with rifle barrels. But, you know, the real purpose of this is to, you know, enlighten you to the land and groove aspect, to the twist aspect and one thing or another. And, but there's a lot of things involved and this is why I'm mentioning everything because it's all part of the whole picture.